Good morning guys. It is 6.14 a.m. and this is the beginning of my freezer meal video. Um, last night before I went to bed I put a pork roast in the oven and look at this. Oh my gosh it looks so good. It smells delicious. Look at that. So I just put it in this big roasting pan here, covered it with foil, and I cooked it on 275 overnight. I put it in the oven at 9 or so, 9, 930, and I just let it roast. The house smells amazing. Look at this. Oh my gosh. This um, marinade here is a moco. So, yeah, that's nice. It looks awesome. It smells good. Okay, look at this. I had to go and get a fork so I could show you. Look how it just pulls apart. Oh my gosh. Wow. Oh my gracious. It smells amazing. Look, oh my, oh my. Okay, guys, this is the beginning of my freezer meal cooking video. All right, guys, good morning. This is the beginning of my freezer meal uh, video for today. Um, this is the grocery list that I have uh, laid out for everything. These are the ingredients here, and this is the meats. Now, all together, this meat here is about 40 pounds of meat. So, it's a lot of cooking. I'm not really sure I'm going to get to everything that I decided to do today, but um, I, as you can see here, I have a chicken breast, rotisserie chicken, meatballs, shrimp, smoked sausage, breakfast sausage, chicken legs, and hot dogs over here is bacon ham cubes stew beef lunch meat which is ham and turkey uh, roast pork tuna ground beef and chicken thighs so that's what I'm going to be cooking today hopefully I'll get to everything I may not get to everything but we will see and then these are the ingredients down here. I mean, it's a lot of ingredients. I'm not going to read everything. But as you can see, this is how I separate everything, the meat. And I also, if you can see right here, I also put how many pounds of meat I'm going to need for each, um, for each meat. That way, I can just grab everything, put it all together, and I know I've got enough. I won't run out for anything. And I do the same thing down here, as you can see, where I have like a times two and a times four right here. <coughs> Excuse me, for the um, ingredients that I need. Now, this is my menu. <laughs> Yeah, it's a lot of things. Now, I'm not going to get to make everything on this list. These are hopeful things, and it may be things that I do in a couple of days, but I'll read it to you. This is what I have. The first one is a chicken stuffing bake, an Olive Garden Italian chicken dressing, um, Italian dressing chicken, beef and rice aroni, yellow rice and chicken, pork roast, beef stew, potato ham soup, hot dogs and beans, taco meat, uh, twice baked potatoes, chicken alfredo, spaghetti, meatloaf, barbecue, uh, chicken, corn chowder, shepherd's pie, chicken pot pie, chicken noodle soup, chicken fajitas, Heinz 57 sauce meatballs, that's a family favorite, tuna noodle casserole, meat pies, sandwiches, which are the ham and turkey, uh, chicken pillows, hash brown casserole, red beans and rice, and shrimp with angel hair pasta. So that is 28 things I have here, and uh, we'll see how many I get done. All right, come with me. Okay, I have started my uh, freezer meal cooking day. This morning you saw, I showed you the clip of uh, my pork roast, which I put in the oven last night 
and it was ready at six this morning um, and then from then on I had to get the family ready make sure my daughter logged on for school and get some laundry done so now I uh, had to do some more prep work and um, I'm getting ready to get started it is uh, it's about 1 49 about almost two o'clock so I'm getting started right now I have an appointment at 4 30 so I'm gonna see how much I can get done between two and four probably two hours um but I, I wanted to show you guys the uh items that i'm using to store my freezer meals all right guys this is what i'm using to store my freezer meals in this is a 32 ounce uh cylinder container like this it comes with the lid i got this off of amazon there were 24 in a pack for like 12 15 dollars or so um this is what I'm using to store my soups in and any type of liquids. I've had some bad luck with storing my soups in a freezer bag. The bag swole, you know, froze and then expanded and burst the seams on the side. So I'm going to give this a try. The next thing is this. This is my favorite. This is an 8 inch baking dish. Now I'm not cooking for 10 or 12 people, I'm cooking for 4 people and you know when you're doing your freezer meals this is the pan that most people are using, this half um, half pan which is like a 10 by 12 I think they said it is uh, that I get from Sam's and I used to use this all the time but I had a lot a lot of food waste using this for every single freezer meal that I was doing so I went on Amazon and I found these uh, I'm gonna give these a try they would you know have four equal portions right there and they also come with the lid too okay so next one is the the big mama the big pan here and this one is that half pan that you get from Sam's it's like 30 in a pack and then you get those with those as well the next thing I'm going to be using is my gallon freezer bags these are the Ziploc I like these the best because they seal really well and I never really have to worry about my food the um, next thing is the half gallon Ziploc freezer bags these are good for just those like half portions basically half gallon half portions where you don't need a whole gallon freezer bag because it doesn't fill up to the top and this saves a lot of space but you're still getting the same amount of food and then the last one is the quart bag now I use these quart bags for side dishes like potatoes rice green beans corn things like that same difference here you know because i have a smaller family this quart size bag really really um helps me manage my food better and i have a lot less food waste so these are all of the six items that i'm going to be using today to store my freezer meals okay friends and welcome to the rest of my freezer cooking video now the first thing we have here is some chicken soup and I made this chicken noodle soup with a uh, rotisserie chicken that I've just bought from Sands and I just pull it off the bone put it in the freezer this makes it easy for me to make meals quickly with chicken and not have to go through cooking the breast or cook legs and pulling the meat off of the bone as you can see here I've just added about two pounds of chicken to this pot I am just kind of warming it up, browning it around, and um, I added some chicken raw to it, some salt, and some pepper, and eventually I will add some garlic and herb seasoning to the pot. Now remember, when you have the chicken like this in the rotisserie from a rotisserie bird, what you're going to need to do is make sure that you're kind of gentle with it. It looks like I'm pushing this around pretty vigorously, but I'm really not. Um, then we're going to add three cartons. I think that's what they are, cartons. Three cartons of chicken broth from Sam's. And then we're going to add some vegetables, I believe. Now, once this is after it comes to a boil. We're just going to stir that in, stir in some more chicken broth powder or chicken seasoning, and give it a whisk. Still adding more seasoning. <laughs> <laughs> I 
and then we'll put the top on it bring it to a boil once we get the top on it and we bring it to a boil then we're going to add our vegetables now the vegetables i like to use that was just garlic powder the vegetables i like to use are the bird's eye family size mixed vegetables because the vegetables are in larger chunks they're more whole carrots plumper corn uh, plumper green beans instead of just your standard mixed vegetables but if you can't find them just use whatever mixed vegetables you choose canned frozen whatever then you stir it in let it come to a boil I put a few more uh, cups of water in here because I had a lot in this pot and I was trying to stretch the broth. Now once this comes back up to a boil, then we're going to add the noodles and let it simmer for about five minutes until the noodles are nice and tender. I just use the Walmart egg noodles, but you can use whatever noodles you have on here little more water just so that you can get everything moving in the pot all right friends this is the finished product there look at that oh it looks awesome it's got huge chunks of chicken in it fresh vegetables, a delicious broth, tender noodles. This is really, really good. This is one of our uh, family favorites <laughs> for us, especially with the colder months. This is just perfect. So I'm going to put this to the side and let this cool off and then I'm going to store it in my cylinder containers. Okay, the next soup we're going to make is ham and potato soup. This one is a family favorite. Now in the pot there, I just have some baking grease and I put in about a half an onion. I'm going to sweat these onions until they become translucent. Stirring them around, seasoning with salt and pepper. Then next, I'm going to use some Smithfield diced ham cubes. And I'm going to stir them in and kind of get them a little golden and toasty with the onions. Once I do that and get everything together, I'm going to Continue to season in layers, just some garlic powder and some onion powder. Then I'm going to get about a quarter of a cup of flour. I'm going to spread a space open in the pot so that I can pour the flour and let it get kind of toasty. Make sure that you let the flour get toasty and cook. Because if you leave it raw, it'll give a terrible flavor to the soup. There, I'm pouring in and just let it get a little toasty and make sure I coat the onions and ham with the flour. As you can see on the bottom, the flour is cooking up. Then I put in a carton of chicken broth, or you can make ham stock, whichever one you choose. Stir it in and make sure you scrape the bottom to get the cooked flour bits off. Pour in a little more chicken broth powder just to flavor. That's a little pepper and a little garlic and herb seasoning. Give it a stir until the mixture begins to thicken. 
Next, we're going to add canned potatoes. These diced canned potatoes make soup just a breeze. Now, as you can see, the soup is getting thick and it smells amazing. Then I pour in about a cup of half and half, or you can use heavy cream, whichever you have on hand. Milk will work as well. But if you use milk, let it cook a little while longer until it gets a chowder consistency. Next, I'm adding crinkle cut frozen carrots and stirring everything together. There you go. Then you just turn it to low and cover it and let it simmer. All right, guys, here it is. It's nice and bubbly. Look at that very thick, sort of a chowdery stew. Now, if you have ham stock, you can use ham stock instead of chicken stock. It, I mean, chicken broth. Chicken broth is all I have. But um, if you were able to have some ham, ham stock or ham broth on hand, please use that. It gives this just the meatiest, most delicious flavor. Um, I mean, this is... Uh, my mouth is watering. <laughs> this looks amazing. It smells amazing. There it is right there. So I'm going to turn this off and just let this cool. And uh, then I'm going to package it up. So this is another one of my freezer meals. Okay, friends. As you can see, I am packaging up a ham and potato soup. I have about three or four of these containers and then of the ham and potato soup and then I had four of the chicken noodle soup. Hey guys, uh, it's Juanita. Um, I am on my second phase of my freezer cooking meals. Um, this time I'm going to be do using these items here. As you can see, everything here to be making uh, some more meals. Um, I got about four meals cooked last night. I got three gallons of soup made and my twice baked potatoes. So today I'm going to see how far I can get. I'm going to cook for about four hours, like from four to eight. See how many meals I can make in that time. And I'll take you along for the ride. All right, guys. Now we're on to the next section of my freezer meal cooking video. Now we're getting ready to make yellow rice and chicken. And you have to forgive the filming here. I had a young helper who was interested in being an amateur cinematographer. So that's why the film is so shaky. <laughs> but here I'm browning up four chicken thighs. If this one would come off the fork. Ugh, there we go. And then in the pan, I'm going to use the rest of the grease I used to brown up the chicken. And I put in two cups of yellow rice just to get it nice and toasty. Oh, look at that. Nice. So we're going to get the rice nice and toasty. Then I'm going to pour in a carton of chicken broth. And then let that come to a nice boil. The great thing about this rice is it's already seasoned. So you really don't have to do too much in the way of giving this meal flavor. Once the rice comes up to a boil, then I'm going to lay the chicken thighs back into the pot and nestle them in the rice. Make sure you save all those juices on the plate. Pour them right back in the pot. That is pure, concentrated flavor. Mm. 
Then you're going to put the top on, turn it to low, and let it cook for 20 to 25 minutes. Now, while that's cooking, I'm going to move on to the next meal, which is barbecue chicken legs. Now, these are just raw chicken legs that I put in a 13 by 9 aluminum pan and just pour the barbecue sauce on top, put the lid on, boom, freezer meal, just like that. When you're ready to cook it, take it out and defrost it the night before. Cook it on 375 for 40 minutes to an hour. If it's frozen, cook it for an hour and 20 minutes. Boom! Now my chicken and rice is ready. Look at that. Can't you smell it through the screen? This is one of my family's favorites. Okay. The next meal we're going to do is another quick meal. Heinz 57 meatballs. You just use some pre-cooked meatballs that you get from Walmart or Sam's. Take a bottle of Heinz 57 sauce, squirt it all over the top, and you're done. Put the lid on and freeze. These meatballs are delicious. They go great for lunch, on sandwiches, just about any. Next, we're going to make some chicken dishes. This one is going to be uh, Olive Garden Italian Chicken. Now I have about four pounds of chicken breast cut up there for these next two meals. So I put about two pounds of cubed chicken breast in this, pan, in this bag. Then I put in a whole brick of cream cheese cut up in the squares. Now I like to cut it up in squares because when you lay it out, it just fits in the bag better. There you go. See? Then after I get the squares in, I'm going to pour in an entire jar of Olive Garden Italian dressing and close up the back and we're done. Make sure you press the air out of the bag so that you can get a fresher seal. Now I didn't do a good job here because when I laid it down, it seeped out the top, <laughs> but it's okay. It's my kitchen. I can do what I want. Next, we're going to make chicken fajita. Now, this is a half gallon bag, and I just put the cut up chicken breast. I put in a little water and a packet of fajita seasoning, and you're done. Always remember to wipe your hands when you're dealing with raw meat to avoid cross-contamination. There's the mild feet to mix. Pour it in. Massage it around. And we're done. The next meal is chicken alfredo. Now for this meal, I'm using another bag of frozen rotisserie chicken. Just put it in your gallon freezer bag and put in three jars of your favorite alfredo sauce. 
Now I do use a lot of Alfredo sauce here because I like the way the sauce and the melt together. And we're done. There we go. Three chicken freezer meals in less than 10 minutes. Okay, guys, I am about to make um, make some hot dogs and beans for this freezer meal. Um, this freezer meal session that I'm doing, oh my goodness, I am getting so much done. It's taking a little while, though, but I'm getting so much done. Okay, so in this bowl, I've cut up three pounds of hot dogs, like this, this pack of hot dogs. I've cut up three pounds of them in, you know, bite-sized chunks here. And then I'm just going to pour in my baked beans. Now, this is a big can. It's like, how many ounces is this? 117 ounces of baked beans. Bush's baked beans. I got this from Sam's. Oh, my gosh. Oh, this is heavy. Oh, my gosh. I did it. Oh, my gosh. Okay. <laughs> so, I'm going to pour the baked beans in this bowl. Now, this bowl is a 20, where are we at? No, this is up a 60 quart bowl. There we go. They come out really good. All right. 60 quart bowl. And I'm going to mix these two together in this bowl. And I'm not going to cook these because they're pretty much already cooked. I mean, the hot dogs are pre-cooked. All you really need to do is sort of warm them up. And the baked beans are cooked already too. So I'm just going to mix these together. I'm going to put in about a half a stick of butter in each bag. Because I put butter and sugar in my baked beans. And some people put ketchup. Whatever you like, put it in there. But this is a quick and easy lunch for my family. I can just pop this out of the freezer. <clears throat> Excuse me, my voice is going. I've been talking for forever. Um, I can just pop this out of the freezer and defrost this or, you know, let it defrost overnight. And then, wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. We have lunch for the next day. When we come back, I'll show you how I package them. guys I've got two gallons of hot dogs and beans ready to go in the freezer um, I just fill them up now not all the way because you really need to leave a little space as you can see that I have here for like when it freezes and it expands so it doesn't burst the bag open up here or on the sides but I've got two gallons of hot dogs and beans uh, great lunches for for the kids on a Sunday or Saturday afternoon and I'm going to go put these in the freezer. I'm going to freeze them flat and move on to my next meal. Okay, friends. Um, I made another pot of rice and chicken. My family ate the first pot, so I don't have any footage of me storing that. So I just went ahead on and made a second one. This meat right here is three chicken legs that I've taken the meat off of the bones and like sort of just use these tongs to break it up and shred it. And I'm getting ready to just dump it into the rice here. So I have like some, not like, so I have some chicken and rice. There we go. Then I'm just going to mix this up. Look how beautiful this rice is. 
Oh my goodness. This is yellow rice or Spanish rice. Oh my gosh, look at that. So I'm just mixing the chicken into the rice. Just like so. Alright. And then I'm going to put it in uh, probably some pan, probably in the 8 inch pans and put it in the freezer. Look at all that chicken. You would not think that a chicken leg had a lot of meat on it, but this actually does. Oop, wait, there's a bone in there. Let me get that out. See, look at that. <laughs> all right, let me go ahead on and get this ready and put it in the trace and I'll show you when we're done. Okay, friends, I am almost finished getting this chicken and rice in their pans. So these are the 8 inch pans that I mentioned in the beginning of the video. I really like these pans a lot because um, it helps with us not wasting food because it's in portions that are good for my size family. I don't have a particularly, I do have a lot of children, but <laughs> they're all off on their own. <laughs> and right now I just have two at home. So that leaves me with just my husband and the two kids at home. And so I'm usually only feeding about four people, but it could get up easily to six or eight people uh, when the family comes over, when my other kids and my grandkids and everybody comes over. So um, my nieces and my sister and everything else. So having these meals conveniently portioned really helps out a lot. So if I was going to have like say, you know, four more people over, I would just pull out another tray of this and just bake it up. And there we go. Okay. So, see, all gone. Set that off to the side there. Pick up that little piece of rice, throw it in. Then, whoop, excuse me guys. Then I'm going to get my lids right here that go on these. Now I have actually three pans of this if you can see right there I have one two three pans so I'm gonna put the lids on all of these and then just put them up in the freezer and we'll have yellow rice and chicken okay the next meal we're going to be doing is chicken pot pie now in the pot there I have a cup of butter and I am putting in one diced onion it can be small or large whichever is to your taste I am sauteing the onion in the butter until the onion becomes translucent. After that, I'm going to add some seasoning. I'm adding some poultry seasoning here. Then I'm going to add salt, then pepper, and then garlic and herb seasoning. I use that stuff for everything. Stir vigorously until the seasonings are all coated, coating the onion. Next, I'm going to add a cup of flour to create a roux or base for the chicken pot pie. Just tap the flour in and stir it quickly, making sure that you don't stop. Continue stirring until the mixture becomes smooth. And this is the roux or base for your chicken pot pie. Next, I'm going to add some chicken broth, and this is a carton of chicken broth. As you can see, I'm just adding a little at a time and incorporating it into the roux so that the sauce thickens. A little more you add, a little more thickening. I'm going to add an entire carton of chicken broth to this base. Once the base is to my desired thickness, I'm going to add two and a half cups of chicken. This is shredded rotisserie chicken. You can uh, boil chicken breast if you like and put that in as well, shredded. Next, I'm adding the mixed vegetables, frozen mixed vegetables, 
Look how delicious and thick this looks. Then I'm going to add a half a cup of whipping cream or heavy cream, whichever you have on hand. Then I'm adding a can of diced potatoes and stirring everything together to warm through. Look how thick and delicious this looks. I wish you guys could smell this. It smells amazing. Next, I'm going to cover this and let this simmer and then begin to set up my chicken pot pie shells. Okay guys, um, here I am. Had to do a little bit of maneuvering so that I could um, get this pie crust filled. I was going to do it over on the stove, but I just told you what my stove issues are. So okay. So now what I'm going to do is I've already gotten the pie crust in this 8 inch pan here. This is the 8 inch square pans that I've been using. And then I'm just going to fill it up using my one cup measuring cup. Oh wow, this looks really good. Fill it up using my one cup measuring cup. There we go. So that's like about two cups. Three cups. I'm thinking I may be able to get one more in here before I put the top crust on. So, yeah, it's about four cups. There we go. The oven's preheated to 425. I'm going to make another uh, chicken pot pie for later on and um, use that there. But this is the one we're going to eat for dinner tonight. So, let me go ahead on and get the top crust put on here. Come on, come on. There we go. I just laid it out on the plate so I didn't have to fuss with it while I was talking to you guys. And so I'm going to put this right over the top. Press it on the edges. I know right here I didn't have a lot of pie crust, so I'm going to have to seal that one in. Press it on the edges to kind of seal it to the bottom. Now, some folks just keep the extra, which I actually think I might do, and just flute it so that it looks nice and pretty. Or you can just cut off the excess, whichever works for you. This kind of works for me a little bit. There's a little bit too much here. So let me just go ahead and pull this off. There we go. And then, so one thing about pie crust is it's very forgiving. So tuck it, roll it, and then continue to flute it all the way around. Well, this doesn't look that happy. <laughs> there we go. That looks a lot better. But you get the general idea. There we go. Tuck it. And flute it. It looks like where the rest of it? Aha, there it is right there. It's a little bit extra here because it's a square. There we go. Just peel off the rest. Then we're gonna tuck it under and 
try my best to make it look pretty. Try my best to make it look pretty. I guess that's good enough for right now. Peel these edges off right here. There we go. Yeah, not too bad. Not too bad. All right, then I'm going to get a knife and I'm going to cut a couple slits in it to vent it and I'm going to put it in the oven. So just going to cut a slit here, a longer one, and then a shorter one there. All right, there you go. Chicken pot pie for dinner. Alright friends, here's the bowl of ground beef that I made. This is seven pounds of ground beef that I just browned up for various meals for, throughout this uh, freezer meal thing, this freezer meal preparation that I've been doing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add maybe three cups of browned ground beef. There we go into the beef rice aroni. Now the ground beef has been seasoned with uh, salt and pepper, a little onion powder, a little garlic powder, just to give it, you know, some flavor. There you go. All right. I'm trying to do this all with one hand <laughs> and the camera, so kind of bear with me here. I think you could use a little bit more ground beef. So let me just try and grab a little bit more ground beef, put that in there, there you go, there. Then we're just going to bring this to a boil, as it's coming to a boil right now, put the top on it, put the top on it. Turn it down to low and let it cook for about 20 minutes. All right, see you when we get back. All right, guys, I am back. Now this here, I just made some taco meat here. It's just the ground beef that was in the bowl over there, some refried beans and taco seasoning. I'm just gonna put that in one of these tins here and put it in the freezer for whenever we want tacos. All right, now back here is the rice, the beef rice aroni and uh, ground beef. So let's see. Oh yeah, so that looks great. Smells delicious. So, see it's the rice there, the ground beef. Oh wow, yeah, this smells great. Looks great too. Now what I serve this, how I serve this, not what I serve it with, but how I serve this is just a meal by itself with a vegetable. Usually I sprinkle a little bit of um, fried onions on top of it to give it some crunch. And that's pretty much it. All right, guys. Thanks so much. I appreciate it. Okay, guys. I just wanted to show you this is what your kitchen looks like when you are freezer cooking. It is entirely normal for you to just have a mess just everywhere. This is my like third load of dishes. I have cans everywhere, plates everywhere. That's freezer meal cooking.